Star Wars declared worse and woker than ever. True. After confirmation of intimacy coordinator hired for the Acolyte. What? The upcoming Star Wars series, The Acolyte, helmed by former Harvey Weinstein assistant Le Leslie Headland, has an intimacy coordinator as part of its production. Okay. Aren't intimacy coordinators like a really common standard thing to have in most Hollywood productions? Breaking points cringe? Where? Never heard of it? What the fuck is that? Okay. When, when people are directed to have sex on film, obviously it's not real sex. They're sex scenes or anything intimate. You normally need somebody who's kind of specialized in everything associated with the comfort of the people involved, right? Like... You, I'm sure you all can imagine a lot of bad stuff happening in a scenario where there are like 50 people on set, like you have the actors, the director, all the stage, all the people in the back, and then it's like, okay, here's the scene where you're both basically naked and you like touch up against each other and you're like bellies touch and, and like you're kissing and it's like, yeah, do all this on camera. Also, it's your job. Also, everyone's watching you. Also, like, you know, uh, maybe your actor who you're the person who's right with you is being a bit weird or like they're touching their hands moving down further and you're coming. And it's like, okay. Intimacy coordinator, all right? And their job is basically to go there and spritz a water bottle on you if one of the actors gets a boner. So that way it's, like, not weird. Intimacy, intimacy coordinators improve the sex scenes as well? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's their job. They're the whole, that's the whole... Yeah. So how's this woke? Sarah puts associates, which describes herself to use... If you're unfamiliar with intimacy coordinators, SAG AFTRA notes the position is an advocate, a liaison between actors in production, a movement coach, and or choreographer in regards to nudity and simulated sex and other intimate and hyper-exposed scenes. The union specifically details intimacy coordinator. Yeah, okay, so like, how is this woke? Vosh, in Fifty Shades of Grey, the first movie had an intimacy coordinator, but the following didn't, and the actors in the following movies were getting drunk to get through the production. I heard about that. I heard about that from the Folding Ideas video. Yeah, in the first one, they had, like, a, a good work standards, but they basically, like, they dropped that for the future ones, and the actress was just, like, slamming back a couple of shots before doing it, so she was more, like, relaxed. Which is, by the way, not good workplace standard, if you can imagine it. Um, like, if you can fathom... Um, so how is this woke? What's happening? She elaborated, listen, I relate to male characters all the time, like I root for Mendo, like I root for Luke. I like deeply, deeply, well, not sure how much I care about Han Solo anymore. What? Han Solo is the best character from the original trilogy. When I was little, I really liked him. When I watch him now, I'm kind of like, gosh, a lot of my psyche makes sense now. Hmm, okay. Don't project your daddy issues onto Han Solo. He's great. All joking aside. Okay, she's joking. I can't tell the tone. I think that truly, I think that an inclusive space means an inclusive space. Um, but at the same time, I think that just because someone has a female advertiser. So, so wait, where is the woke accusation? What's happening? Oh, it's a black woman with an undercut. Is that why? Is it still an undercut when the cut goes all the way up to here? Or is the undercut only like the side? Is this still an undercut? She's hot though. Well, yeah. I don't, when does the article get to the accusation that things are woke? It doesn't? Then how is it woke? Woke is mentioned in the title. In response to this revelation, YouTuber Open Airlock Policy declared, Surprise, Star Wars is not saved. Star Wars is worse and woker than ever. Okay. Is that this? Yeah, it is this. 2.27k subscribers? Do we really... We really gonna signal boost a tiny YouTube channel like that? Like, really? Three minutes? 655 views. By watching this right now, we're literally 10 times as many people are live on this stream than the number of views. That, sure, whatever. We're, we're in this far. Okay, sure. What is it? What's the accusation? Just tell me. Just what is it? Okay. Disney Lucasfilm plans on making sex scenes, and not just sex scenes, but woke sex scenes. Okay, never mind. This is good to watch. <laughs> I hate it when I'm having sex um, with a fellow progressive and they make this exact O-face. I hate, I hate that every time. This tip 
comes from friend of the channel, OG Star Wars. The newer Twitter account, Star Wars Covered Geekly, reported earlier today that the production team for The Acolyte will include something called a lead intimacy coordinator. They link to agency Sarah Putt Associates. Who Wait, does I don't think this person actually knows what an intimacy coordinator is. Represents one Adelaide Waldrop. Her listing shows the eight-episode series The Acolyte. The Acolyte, of course, has been in the works for three years, headed up by Leslie Headland, former assistant to the shamed and convicted Hollywood mogul Harvey Weinstein, who will serve 39 years in prison. <laughs> The only reason I didn't bring that up is because I'm pretty sure a lot of people worked for Harvey Weinstein. Like, that's the whole point, right? Like, the main way he abused people was that he was incredibly powerful and had a lot of women who were, like, dependent on him in the industry. There's actually a decent chance that he sexually abused her, which, like, that's why I didn't really talk about it. I don't know, but she wasn't a f***ing accomplice. Like, I don't think Harvey Weinstein... I, yeah, okay, just, yeah. ...served 39 years in prison for sexual assault. We exposed some of the agenda of Leslie Hedlund almost a year ago on stream. The other shows Adelaide has worked on are so different from Star Wars that it is a... What? Okay. ...downing that this silly role is even needed on set. Adelaide is co -secretary. What? Okay, I, I get... I get what's happening here. The problem is, if you're an intimacy coordinator, you kind of necessarily have to be, like, anti-rape. It would be pretty difficult to be an intimacy coordinator if your attitude towards the Me Too movement was like, bro, whatever, stupid bitch. Like, it'd be really tough to kind of, you know, leverage that into an intimacy coordinator position. So, by, by the standard of these people's very, like, crumbly dry brains uh this i guess would kind of necessarily be like a like a woke role you know area back to intimacy coordinators what is this intimacy coordination shit let's look at back to's website look at this insanity no per <laughs> performance of simulated sex or full nudity in an audition in other words, no casting couches. <laughs> Mental health re Yeah. Yeah? You yeah, we probably shouldn't Yeah? It's why why would this guy bring up Harvey Weinstein in like a negative context if this guy agrees with Harvey Weinstein? <laughs> Look at this. You're not even allowed to hire women based on how good they get naked in front of you. <laughs> Resources? Nudity writer? Writer triggering language a BDSM fetish consultant to ensure that community is portrayed accurately Look at the sickos chiming in on Twitter with their disgusting takes this weirdo says let us pray They don't do a rings of power where there was an intimacy coordinator, but they didn't really use is this Is this an AI voice? They're not modulating their tone. This sounds like a stock AI voice doesn't it? Use it. Jarbo, saying sex in Star Wars with the Mandalorian... I feel like I've heard this voice before. Dude, he just has autism? Well, that's no excuse. This is the way GIF. New Star Wars with black female lead has sex in it. It better be gay. Maybe, maybe AI art is real. <laughs> what the fuck? Pink Milk took it this far. OMG, I love this. The homophobes are going to feast and squirm in their basic houses. Andor brought us sex in Star Wars. Now Acolyte brings us gay sex. That's not a very good gay lispy voice. Is that meant to be like a gay voice? I could do a way better gay voice than that guy, and I'm more masked than he is, for sure. Like, come on. The homophobes are going to feast and squirm in their basic houses. Andar brought us sex in Star Wars. Now Acolyte brings us gay sex. Like, come on, like, put a little effort into it. Come on. This all ties into why Disney Lucasfilm allows grooming drag panels at...
<laughs> we hired someone to help. Like, the funny thing is that the intimacy coordinator's job is almost literally to prevent people from being groomed. So the idea, like, it, I know we keep running back into the same problem, but it is very funny how basically every um, Republican talking point is like, I am firmly opposed to all the grooming uh, these drag queens are doing. It gets in the way of all the rape I want to do. Like, I, like, literally, like, every time. Well, they don't understand the concept of consent. This is what I mean when I say, like, the, the idea of, like, perceiving consent is political. You know what I mean? Like, the guy from Playing With Fire didn't get that when I said that. But, like, conservatives are literally, like, brain-groomed into not understanding the concept of sexual consent. Um, you know, I, I mean, that's the best case scenario. The worst case is that they know what it means and they actively ignore it. But, you know, there's probably a lot of that, too. Also, movies that don't have intimacy coordinators almost always have sexual abuse. Like Last Tango in Paris and The Warmest Color is Blue. Yeah, in that one... What's the one movie where the girl uncrosses and recrosses her legs and you can see her pussy on the screen? That... Was it Sandra Bullock? I don't remember. I don't even know if I ever saw the movie. But um, I, I do know... Um, basic Instinct. I do know she was lied to. Um, she wanted to wear underwear for the scene. And... Um, the the director or something was like oh yeah the 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 underwear is interfering with the camera shot you have to take it off but don't worry your vulva won't show in the thing and then they did the thing they're like tee and they took the video of her like bare pussy and just put it in a movie that like millions of people have seen which you might think is like kind of bad if you think about it for a second like li like literally yeah slightly bad maybe she lost custody of her child because of that scene. It was Sandra Bullock, right? Was it someone else? No, Sandra Bullock is brunette, not blonde. I don't know. Sharon Stone. I just knew it started with an S. No way for real? Um, yeah. I mean, I think she's still, like, relatively respected. Today. Like, I, I don't think she, like, fell off and no one hears about her anymore. But, um... Li like, literally, it's a whole... Yeah. That's evil shit. It is evil shit. Yeah, in Hollywood, like, there's a lot of evil. But, like, the funny thing is, this guy probably thinks that Hollywood is full of, like, grooming and sexual abuse and pedophilia, but he's, he's literally advocating for the removal of one of the few positions that prevent it. Why the fuck would she lose custody over that? Um, probably because it was cited as, like, evidence of her being a whore or whatever, even though it, she didn't, like, choose it. Um, break through here. There's, there's got to be a section on it. Like, there's no way there isn't. No? Uh, is it is it one of the things I already looked through? Personal life? Control F custody? Well, I, I just... I wanted to, like, confirm that it was not a consensual... At 14, her neck was badly injured while breaking a horse when the animal bucked as it charged towards a washing line. Oh, well, that's not good. Jesus. Neck broken. Dang. Don't, don't always come back from those. Public image. Is there... I feel like this should be a big section. I, I, I'm kind of surprised there's not a big section talking about it. Like, Linky here. It's just a big deal. You know? Sharon Stone recalls being misled about nudity in Basic N16. She was told we can't see anything in the infamous sequence. She very recently revealed it. Sharon Stone said she lost custody of her child because of her famous scene in Basic Instinct. Man, that is so f***ing sad. I lost custody of my child, she said. When the judge asked my child, my tiny little tiny boy, do you know your mother makes sex movies? Like this kind of abuse by the system, this kind of abuse that I was con uh, considered what kind of parent I was because I made that movie. What a piece of shit, judge. Dude, stuff like this happens to women like all the time. This is, this is why when you hear male conservatives go like, dude, things are like basically even between men and women. Like they don't know because it's almost always guys saying that. But like the problem is like if you, it's, it's kind of like being black and like, 99% of black people, if you told them, like, yeah, man, like, race, like, racism doesn't happen that much, would laugh in your face. And, like, most women, like, yeah, dude, they, like, all have a story, you know? Um, 90s was a rough time. This was in 2004. It wasn't even the 90s. I got nominated for a glo Golden Globe for that part when I went to the Golden Globes and they called my name. A bunch of people in the room laughed. She said, I was so humiliated. And I was like, does anyone have any idea how hard it was to play that part and to try to carry this complex movie that was really ba breaking all boundaries? I have heard Basic Instinct was a good movie. I haven't seen it. Basic Instinct was 90s, though. When did the movie come out? Basic Instinct. 
1992, which means that she lost custody of her child 12 years after the movie was made. That means the child wasn't even alive back when the movie was made. She lost custody because years before the birth of that child, a director told her that her vulva wouldn't show and kind of like compelled her to take her panties off in a shot. And the child was adopted? Jesus Christ. Celebration. Official Star Wars celebration. Sorry, that's shillabration. Surprise, Star Wars. I don't understand how that would cause someone to lose their kid. Because a lot of men hate women. They hate women because women are beautiful. And men resent the fact that beautiful women exist without being sexually subservient to them. And as a product of that, um, a lot of men will take out on women and with any possible excuse, anything they can tie to like her perceived sex history, real or imagined, anything regarding her lasciviousness or sexuality or sensuality, anything they can tie to her, because they consider them like, like taunts. Beautiful women, to, to many men, like the existence of a beautiful woman is like a permanent taunt. You can't have this. That's all they're capable of perceiving women as. They don't think of women as people. They think of women as like, uh, like items or, or totems of interest that just aren't reciprocating that interest. They're, they're non-reflective surfaces. They do not reflect that attention. And for that reason, they hate them. And they'll take it out in them when they get the chance. And that's why, like, right now, Republicans are trying to ban contraception and force, like, women back into, like, forced domestic servitude where abortion is illegal and contraception is unavailable. And, um, like, women just stay at home and be sexually subservient to their men. Like, that, like the, it, 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 there are political ideologies with constituents in the millions that are dedicated to this principle. I wouldn't even say millions. I would say billions. Because at the heart of conservatism is this claim. Male sexual insecurity is like one of the er instincts of the fascist. Or even of the conservative. Not even just of the fascist. And keep in mind, like, not even to speak of the West, alright? Do you have any idea how bad this stuff gets in, like, India? Or in wide swaths of Africa? Or in, like, like rural China? Or, like, there are so many parts of the world where, like, you, you go over there and it's like the situation there is way the f worse. Um, trad wives enable it. To an extent, first of all, there's nothing wrong with a woman wanting to be, like, a domestic servant, I guess, if they want. Like, if it's a kink thing or just their lifestyle preference, that's fine. But likewise, um, for a lot of women, it's a defense mechanism. Like, this is one of the reasons why women end up being, like, reciprocal advocates for their own suppression. It's, we call it pick me, but to an extent, there is, like, a legitimate air of self-defense there, right? Because... If you live in a world where women who aren't like trad wives or whatever are like horribly shamed and mistreated or whatever, like obviously you're going to develop values that that like sort of put you in that role. The natural consequence of that environment. This is not saved. Star Wars is worse and woker than ever. KK, Jean Favreau, Dave Filoni, and all the rest of them don't care about real Star Wars fans. They cater to the percentage of a percentage and have thus run real fans off pros and bases who hold out wait who the man the mandalorian ran real fans off isn't the mandalorian and andor both like really popular the rest of them don't care about wars is worse and woker than ever kk jean favreau dave filoni and all the rest of them don't care about real star wars fans I i'm pretty sure their products are doing incredibly well right now they cater to the percentage of a percentage and have thus run real fans off. Pros and bases who hold out hope for good Star Wars are living in denial. Disney Star Wars is dead. Support real Star Wars, which is pre-2014. Okay. I, it's, this still does almost feel like AI satire to me, and I, ju I don't know. I can't tell if that image is supposed to be racist or not. Yeah, I was wondering too. Because, like, obviously this guy is racist. So, like, is this a race? I can't tell. He said pros and banjos, I, right? I don't know what that means. Is it a dog whistle? I, I don't know. I, I have no idea. I, 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 said, I don't know. Oh, my God, he likes the prequels. Oh, you know for a fact that this guy's, like, tearing up whenever he hears Jar Jar Binks speaking on Coruscant to, like, the Senate or whatever. Like, you, you, you know this guy's, like, weeping into his... um limited edition like yoda onesie i hate that i can't do a jar jar impression without um being accused of minstrelry because jar jar's voice is basically just what white guys 120 years ago thought black voices were like <laughs> yes. 
I, I respect the f*** out of George Lucas for that one, man. I respect him so much. He was like, we're going to have a, a comedy sidekick character, okay? What voice are we going to give them? Like, Roll's gigantic wheel, settle in big flashing letters, like the, the, the tiniest sliver of the wheel, like the most racist voice ever. And they're just like, yeah, okay. Like, can you imagine if they, because it, it, it's like a stereotype of minstery. Can you imagine if Jar Jar Binks had like exaggerated Asian accent, you know? Misa judge like that or some shit and the people are and but then it got normalized and people are like people are like running around doing like you know wise chinese ancient sim and then like they're talking like that and people are like oh nice jar jar voice you know like you're people are like running around doing the f eye thing or whatever like screaming like incredibly like xenophobic shit and people are like damn nice jar jar brush <laughs> nice jar jar eyes <laughs> <laughs> and Jar Jar doesn't even have narrow eyes. They just do the thing and people are like, nice Jar Jar. <laughs> the Trade Federation? Dude, wait, f you're right. The Trade Federation literally talked like that. They, uh, now there are two of them. <laughs> they literally did it. The truth is like, are rolling the dice. <laughs> I respect it so much, dude. It's so good. <laughs> it's so funny, dude. Do you think he knew? I'd like to believe that George Lucas has been entirely in his own head since like the late 80s and just he has no idea. So like he 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 just goes up to a bunch of art guys who are like painstakingly working on clay models of these aliens and they're like, "Hey, Mr. uh Mr. uh, uh Mr. Lucas, do you have any ideas for the voice?" And he's like <sighs> it starts right. <laughs> he's, he's they uh is like, "Do you have any ideas for the voice of this this floppy-eared character with the uh, the large snout?" And he's like um already mid applying shoe polish onto his face. <laughs> he's already got like black gloves on with white palms and he's getting, he's getting ready for the the whole bit. Like a like a 4 minute <laughs> minstrel show with a cane and like a top hat. Oh man. Did you forget how insanely racist uh, Temple of Doom was? Lucas has always been on that grind. Yeah, but to be fair, I don't think people in the 80s had, like, an idea of what racism was against, like, indigenous Latin American people, you know? I feel like back in the 80s, most people kind of understood what being racist against Asian or black people was. But I think if you showed them, like, guy in loincloth eating heart in Mayan temple or what, whatever the fuck it was. I haven't seen Temple of Doom in ages. They'd be like, yeah, that's like, yeah, people were just crazy back then. You know, they'd be, you just, you just show them like someone doing a rain dance and then like bathing in blood on an altar. And they'd be like, oh yeah, well, you know, I mean, Temple of Doom was in India. Oh man, I'm sorry. Um, it really has been a while. My bad. Oh, that's right. It wasn't just like indigenous people. They had that dinner scene where they ate like monkey brains out of the monkey head and the, the girl passed out. I remember that. That was incredibly racist. That was like super racist. That was in India? Wasn't that architecture like Mesoamerican? Am I, wait, am I like totally off? I think I, re I, fe I felt like I remembered the stuff in Temple of Doom being Mesoamerican. You're off? Okay. No, all right. It's like, I haven't watched it in like a decade. You know, I... It's not the best movie. <laughs> You're thinking of the intro to Raider of the Lost Ark. I'm. I must be. The, I must be. I must be thinking of when he swaps out in the boulder, like the scene everyone knows. But I. I am. Um, yeah, the Crystal Skull. Well, I haven't seen that one in a while either. The worst Indiana Jones. No, the worst Indiana Jones has to be the Crystal Skull. It's not Temple of Doom. I will never forgive um, the Crystal Skull for both sidesing the Nazis. I will never, like, forgive them for that, you know? Uh, or sorry, not the Nazis. It was like, um, it was like the, the Soviets. I, I think, man, I'm trying to remember. Um, okay, the thing was, like, in the first three, well, mostly the first and the third Indiana Jones movies, they were set in the 30s, and the Nazis were the bad guys. That's a great setting. I like that, by the way. Nazis being the bad guys, that's good stuff. I'm 
I'm super here for that. And then, because he's older, in Crystal Skull, like, the Nazis aren't around anymore, it'd be the Soviets. And guys, I know a lot of people are going to be mad at me, but I have literally no problems with, like, an over-the-top Indiana Jones film where the bad guys are, like, now the Soviets. And, like, instead of doing the Nazis, I hate these guys, lines, it's like, ah, the commies, I hate these guys. Indiana Jones is meant to be, like, comic book pulpy fun. It was literally made to be that. Like, all that shit is straight out of, like, 1940s serialized comics of, like, the, the dashing adventure, like, you know, with one punch he knocks out, like, Captain Nazi and, and takes the gold or what, like, like, yeah, okay, so it's, like, meant to be pulpy, like, yeah, have the, have the head of, like, the enemy group be that, like, Soviet lady with the, with the, the bangs, that's fine, you know, but then for some reason, what, like, Indiana Jones's buddy keeps, like, making anti-capitalist jokes, but, like, in a stupid way, not, not, like, America's bad too, but in more of like a we have to both sides this to kind of like introduce moral complexity that's not actually here in this context. You know what I mean? I don't know. He was a Soviet spy, wasn't he? Yeah, but he kept like making like weird. There were weird comments, man. It was it was weird. He should have gotten Stalin's autograph too, and he should have gotten Stalin's autograph. Though I think that might have happened after the death of Stalin. I think. I don't remember any of that time for a rewatch, I think. Okay, I'm going to end this topic, but I'll say, like, one thing, okay? Here's what I think would have been really fucking good in Crystal Skull, okay? In my opinion, all right? So, obviously, the U.S. versus the Nazis in, like, the 30s in World War II, that's a pretty one-sided dealio. Nazis are worse. I still think the Soviet Union, in a lot of ways, was worse than America during Cold War, but I also think America was worse than the Soviet Union in a lot of ways, so let's just give it a toss-up there, okay? Let's just say they're both capitalist. fuck it. Um, I think it would have been way better if in Crystal Skull, he spent the entire time fighting against the, um, the Soviets, and then in around the end of the second arc, he wins, he gets the Crystal Skull, and he brings it back to the Americans at their request, and the CIA makes it really clear immediately that they're as bad as the Soviet bitch. Like, I, I don't know how you do it exactly. Maybe he's also corrupted by the allure of the alien artifact, or maybe like he like he hands over the crystal skull and he's like, hey, hey, hey uh, we're gonna kill so many Vietnamese or whatever. Like, I don't know. And then like Indiana Jones is like, hmm, okay. And then when he's like, ah, oh, well, you're not gonna use that for anything bad. That belongs in a museum. He gets arrested, and the third arc is him breaking out, and then he flees to the City of Gold, and there's a final confrontation where both American and Soviet forces um, are sent down on him to reclaim the crystal skull that he's trying to use, and that's when the end bit happens with the UFOs, where, like, the, he, he the, brings back the, and, and, like, both sides are unhappy, and then, like, you can have, like, an after scene where, like, the, the head of the CIA guy is arrested because he was, like, being crazy, and the Soviet lady was being crazy, and she, and, you know, and he gets to go back to being a professor. Right? I think that, for me, like, basic plot structure, I think that would have been pretty nice, personally. Um, I think that would have been a lot better than what they did. Um, the UFO bit was also cringe. A lot of stuff could be fixed. I just think that, like, that would have been a better way of introducing, like, moral complexity of the Soviets versus America being different from the Nazis versus America. But I think that would have been smarter because it would have still been pulpy. You know what I mean? Like that would have been because there's nothing pulpy about your like twist reveal character making weird anti-capitalist jokes that end up not going anywhere. That's not pulpy. That's like just weird. That's just stupid. Um, pulpy would be the CIA going, hey, hey, finally the power. And then you're like, oh, OK, great. And then that would be great. Also, seeing like um, Seeing uh, Indiana Jones trying to break out of, like, a CIA detention facility without killing anyone? That would be really cool, don't you think? Like, what What if some of the guards there are, like, nerding out over him because they all know that he's, like, a really cool dude? Like, he's an American adventurer and kind of a hero? So, like, the, like one of his, like, cell guards is like, Oh, can you tell me about the time at, like, Oh, uh, yeah, the, the, you know, like, he's like, Tell me the events of the first movie. Is it true you met Hitler and you got his autograph? And he's like, yeah, here, I got it on me, actually. I'll show you. You know? Come on, ah, oh, come on. I, I think it could have been really nice. It would, it also would have been a good way to make his support character like more useful because he wouldn't have been arrested because he wouldn't have been on the CIA's payroll, so he could have helped like break him out. Um, 
Have you seen my Hitler autograph? Dude, if I had an autograph from Hitler, <laughs> I'd keep that shit close to my chest. Um, I'm retarded. What does pulpy mean in this context? I don't, I don't know if I have like a full... I, I think when I mean pulpy, what I mean is like I'm kind of remembering comic books in the 30s and 40s. I'm thinking like totally sincere. There's no irony at all. So pulp can't have like... It, if For me, if pulp is ironic, it loses the pulp. Um, the point of pulp is that it's kind of like adorably, sincerely um, dumb, but in a way that's very fun and action-packed. Basically, it's like the language of comic book, like Biff, Bam, Pow, Adam West, Batman. Like, m maybe it can't not have irony, but it's more like there has to be an overriding sincerity that that c completes everything. You can't walk away from something pulpy feeling anything other than like Biff, Bam, Pow, wow, that was cool. Um, and I, I like pulpy stuff if it's, if it's done well. Oftentimes it is not, but um, yeah. It's about embracing tropes. Yeah, you embrace tropes. You don't like avoid tropes. You, you, you embrace them wholeheartedly because there's a reason why those tropes exist, right? Like the, the idea is, yeah, like campy to an extent, but like in a good way, if it's done well, yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Just my little ramble, but I hope some of you agree with my points. Yeah, pulp is this. It's Captain America punching Hitler at, on, on the cover of the 1941 Captain America comic. Like, this is pulpy right here. It's, it's incredibly dumb, but it's also great. Y like, the, the room is full of Nazis. All of them are shooting, and the only bullet that hits him deflects off a shield, even though there's a guy with a Tommy gun right here firing at his head. It's just not doing anything. He's just punching Hitler. It's a normal looking punch, like in terms of how far back Hitler's flying, even though Captain America can punch through a tank. Uh, well, not really a tank, but you know what I mean. Um, it's just, it's just, it's just silly. It's just like, yeah, you know? Yeah. Like Star Wars is pulpy. Okay, yeah. Um, so yeah, pulpy Star Wars is like Han Solo navigating through the asteroid field and C-3PO trying to tell him the odds. And he's like, never tell me the odds. We got the thing up. Punch it. But you, like, okay, pul Pulpy is C-3PO trying to explain the physics equation of why what he's about to do isn't going to work. And then Han Solo hitting a button and it works because he's just like, because of bravado. Um, pulp is all about like defying the odds. It's, it's not about realism. It's about like larger than life, like superheroism or, or, or adventurism, I guess. I don't know. What's wrong with Bucky's face? I don't fucking know. He looks terrifying. I know Quentin Tarantino made Pulp Fiction, but aren't all of his other movies super pulpy? Yes. Um, Quentin Tarantino is probably the pulpiest, uh, uh, director. I can't think of one pulpier. He literally had a movie named after it. He's very pulpy. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's his whole thing. Yeah. It's all of his movies, basically. What does pulp mean? We already went over that. Pulp equals soy. Okay, yeah, go with that. All right, close, close.